Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I am starting a series about my journey on the WoW 20th Anniversary Hardcore server. This is my first time giving Hardcore a serious go. I have a level 18 warrior on the other Hardcore realm, but I got bored of him really fast. To be honest, I hate questing with a passion. Doesn't matter what expansion, anytime I have to do them, my brain just dies. When the Hardcore servers came around this time, I figured I'd just give it a try and if I die, transfer to the PvE realm to wait for TBC to launch. I wasn't going to go out of my way to die, but when I did die, that was it. So when the fresh servers dropped, I made my mage on Doomhow and set out on my adventure. What surprised me more than anything was how fast I got bored of questing. I mean, it didn't take any time at all. Before 10, I was miserable. I seriously had no intention of AoE leveling, it just seemed too risky for my first real hardcore attempt. For those that don't know me, or my content, a majority of it is around AoE mage farming. I'm most at home in WoW when I'm doing the same AoE pool 100 times in a row. My brain's just broken like that. So, unfortunately, when I got Arcane Explosion, it took literally 0 seconds for me to start AoE farming. I looked up a few Horde mage speed leveling routes, and most of them had you questing until level 22. I decided to start right away with the Harpies. I figured farming Harpies would net me plenty of light feathers to last until 60, and there were enough spawns here that I didn't have to worry about congestion too much. I learned there are a few reasons why this farm is kind of deadly for Horde Mages. The Witchwing Harpies have a very long slow which makes escaping a pain, especially since we don't have Blink yet and no Escape Artist. The Windcallers have a spell that when they are Nova'd will incapacitate you. You can play around this by taking damage, but it can lead to some really weird pulls. There are also a lot of stealth patrols that can catch you off guard. Lastly, these mobs run away when low. Since we are leveling pre-20, we don't have improved Blizzard or Kona Cold. This makes preventing mobs running away and aggroing stuff much more difficult. After taking the time doing baby pulls and studying the patrols, I was confident that I could farm here. I would just need to be smart with my pull sizes. The moment this started though, I knew I was leveling all the way to 60 AoE farming. This is seriously my favorite way to play this game, and I immediately started my harpy grind. Okay, so my first mage died at 19. I was being incredibly sloppy with my pulls and stupidly greedy with my potions. In my head, I was thinking their white hit damage wasn't enough to kill me even with crits. What I didn't mention earlier was the Slayer Harpies have an execute. The moment I dipped below 20% he executed me, and he happened to crit so yeah. This was the wake up call I needed to stop being so greedy and wild with my play. The good thing was I got far enough in the run that I was enjoying this, but early enough that I wasn't too upset about going again. I was ready for a really serious run, and from here on I was going to be way more aggressive with my consume usage to not take any risk for the sake of greed or pride. It was at this point I decided to not care about being self-found. No handouts obviously, but since I have never leveled to 60 in hardcore before, I was not going to put any strict rules on myself for the sake of looking awesome. I just want to get the 60 AoE farming. So for anyone asking, I am using the auction house. For my next run, maybe I'll do full self found, but for now I just want to see if I can pull off getting to 60 first. Anyways, I created my second mage and began the grind again. I quickly caught to where I was with my last mage and finished the grind out at the harpies. Once I hit level 22 it was time for the south shore farms. This is an area I've never done before, but was excited to try it. It's honestly one of the easier AoE farms I've done. All of the mobs are pretty straightforward to kill here. You have a lot of fences you can use to kite, and there are plenty of mobs. One of the habits you need to get into when learning a new farm is studying the patrols. All of these locations have mobs that patrol around, and if they aggro onto you mid pool, it can make things hell. Always take the time to just patiently scope out the area before you dive into big pools. The harpies have the stealth guides, you have guards that patrol around all of the farms and the mines, 
and the Murlocs and Dustwallow have some of the most annoying patrols you will ever deal with. When I hit 28, I went to the mines, and this is honestly when I got the most tense. Being inside caves is always scary. I haven't done this farm, so I don't know if there are any safe spots. Usually, at a location, you can find a safe spot that no mobs will ever patrol into you. Here, I wasn't able to do that. I'm sure there might be some safe spots, but I was so tense the entire time I was here, I never even looked. I just wanted to get this farm over with as fast as possible. The patrol timings were super annoying and these mobs hit harder than the previous ones, so face tanking them wasn't an option. This is where I want to highlight that crisis management is really just the most important skill about AoE farming and hardcore. There are a billion things that can go wrong in a pool. A patrol runs into you, a mob runs in fear and aggro's more stuff, you get an unlucky daze, you blink in place, unlucky frost nova resists, weird blizzard server ticks. So many things can happen that just makes AoEing harder. In a vacuum, all of these things are easy to deal with, but when things are chaotic, it can overwhelm you. There is an inconsistency that comes with open world farming that unless you've experienced all of these situations, it can be hard to know exactly how to deal with them during the chaos. What do you do when a Frost Nova resists? Well, you run away and reset, right? Well, what happens if that's in the middle of a cave and hyperspawns are blocking your way out? And then you get dazed. What if another player kites a mob on top of you while you're in the middle of a blizzard? There are so many variables that at some point something is going to go wrong, sometimes multiple things go wrong, and you need to know exactly how to handle it. I stayed in the caves until level 30 and then I went to Arathi. At this point, I was feeling pretty good. I was capable of surviving some pretty bad mistakes, and now I had Ice Block. This was when I realized that if I did do a run self-found, I would need to adjust my playstyle. In general, I was mainly using consume buffs just to be safe, but I don't think I need them on my next run. For health potions, I rarely needed them to save my life, they were mostly used to stack mobs. Mana potions are going to be a problem though. I go through mana pots like crazy, probably because I use arcane explosion too much. Luckily, they are super cheap on the auction house, but yeah, just a thought for the future. At level 34, I decided to move to the ogre farm. I was planning on staying at the Arathi farm until 36, but even layer hopping, it was always just too crowded with other mages. The ogres and syndicates had no one on any layer I visited, so it was a really nice and easy farm. The ogres were a little spread out, but this was by far the most chill farm of all the locations so far. Now, I want to talk about the politics of open world farming, and why I usually tend to avoid it. Most of my content is around dungeon farms because, well, you don't have to deal with other people. You can't always avoid people, and there are some politics involved in this that can make your life easier or worse. One example would be when you are AoE farming at a spot with a quest. The Arathi farm has a quest where you need to get the heads of three named mobs. Now, you could be a greedy mage and try and get every mob possible for max XP. But doing that will keep these people around longer. Stealing your mobs and time. Very quickly at this location, I learned it was better to go out of my way to help them kill these named mobs so they would leave faster. Now what happens when there are other mages? Well, most of the time, other mages are here for max XP per hour, just like you. I have found that if I just stick it out for 5 minutes or so, eventually they will layer away and try a new spot. If they don't, depending on the location, there might be enough mobs to share. At the farms in Hillsbrad, for instance, it was very easy for multiple mages to take separate farm areas with very little downtime. Now, you could try and fight those other mages for the tags constantly, but that could lead to sketchy aggro situations and get you killed. Now, it doesn't matter where, all farms can be made worse by people being jerks. I had this guy upset that he had to share the spot with someone else. He threw a fit and began to kite mobs onto me while I was pulling. Luckily, I've experienced things like this before, so I didn't die. I was able to survive his multiple attempts to kill me, and was even able to farm a little XP. Eventually, he layered away, but in reality, I should have probably disengaged the moment he started being a jerk. It was not worth risking losing my hardcore character over this. But hey, welcome to Mage AoE Farming Politics 101. The Murloc Farm is the first farm on this list I've done before as an Alliance player. 
I seriously hate this farm though. It's probably my least favorite. Mainly because of the patrols, but also because of the amount of mobs you're pulling. When you are at level with the mobs, you have a higher chance of resisting than if you are like a level or two above them. When there are more mobs in the pool, obviously that just means extra chances of having a single mob resist your Nova. It really only takes one mob resisting Nova for it to ruin a pool potentially. And since the Murloc pools are so big, I found it happening a lot. Now you can ego your way through it and possibly pull it off. Is it worth the risk in hardcore? Probably not. I found that at this farm, I was resetting and running away way more than any of the other farms. But yeah, that's where we're at right now. Level 40 in the first week after one death. I am having an absolute blast with hardcore. I was not expecting that. I really thought this would be a one and done, don't care type deal. The thing is, when you aren't rushing it, and are just kind of enjoying the game the way you want to, Hardcore kind of makes the world feel more alive. You care about the people around you, the things that are going on, you notice stuff that you wouldn't before. It's really awesome, you're more immersed. I've become kind of a Hardcore fan really fast. Whether this character dies or makes it to 60, this definitely will not be my last Hardcore character. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Sorry it was all over the place. Subscribe for the next video. Peace!